So this video has gone viral online. Here's the other problem with the church is that anytime a person is in need, y'all go to running and dropping money. But let me tell you something, the poor will be with you always. And there is no blessing connected to blessing the poor other than getting back what you gave to them, but no multiplication. Multiplication is segregated for tithes and offering. When you give to the poor, the only thing you do is help them, but you don't help yourself. So when you give a dollar to somebody on the street talking about I did my job, God like, thank you, but it ain't going to help you. Read your Bible. Charity does not bring wealth. Only the tithe does that. Matter of fact, you don't believe me? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach on it you're going to tell me that this is going to ruffle a few feathers and I want you to know that I make pillows out of the feathers that I ruffle when I begin to speak to demons and I sleep well in the cradle of my guy's arms every night pastor you made a statement and sat there and said charity does not bring forth wealth I would assume for someone who is a multi-million dollar pastor of a mega church you know that you were once a charity case we all are if we're being honest we all, someone had to say, I believe in your dream and your vision that you're trying to do, Pastor, to save the lost souls of the thousands and millions of people around the world. So, yes, I'll pour into this. Yes, Pastor, I'll work on your committee and your board to make sure that we can keep it running smoothly because you can't do it on your own, but you need some help. Giving very much charity, bringing forth wealth. Wait, point number two. You got on this internet and you sat there and asked for four million dollars after you were hit with a catastrophic storm and it affected thousands of people in texas however you felt that it was really you that was hit so bad and if i'm not mistaken, once i did the research i'm showing that it's giving very much charity because you and your wife's network is well over four million dollars but you said that ain't even what the sanctuary really costs giving very much blasphemy and you are so harsh what a man said the bible spoke and said to be harsh i got to speak what thus said the lord okay so wait you act as if giving to the poor is a sin but this morning in my devotional, I stopped at count of 67 scriptures where God sits there and says to give to the poor and the needy. Matthew 6, 1 and 4 is one of my favorites where he sat there and said to give unto them, but do not sound the trumpet when you do so. He sat there and also said, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing, but shall you do so your God, shall, your father shall reward you in secrecy because you gave in secrecy. Negro, you done sat on this internet and you are wrong. You have so many souls that are looking up to you and the fact that you had the audacity to say this and you think that you sat down and was comfortable is like, yeah, I preached that. No, you are wrong. And before y'all sit there and say, Ingrid, he's a man of the cloth and I'm a woman of the garment, so what's up? Talk to me oily and not solely. Shawnee O'Neill's husband said that there's no good in blessing the poor. There's no good in blessing the poor because the poor ain't got nothing to bless back. You got to bless Jesus in his house. And guess who's tied to Jesus? He is. Not too long ago, he asked the people of his church, the poor people of his church, the people that he speaks to every week, but cannot bless him back. He asked him for $4 million. So why would you ask poor people for $4 million if you don't think they're worth anything? So you're teaching them to give to the rich? What are you doing? This is why people don't believe in Christianity because everything is tied to the church. And I'm here to tell you my connection with God is not associated with no four walls, with no pastor asking for $4 million, then turn around and saying there's no good in helping poor people. My God, <laughs> never, never thought I'd see the day. I'm telling you right now, I'm 34 years old. And, and I used to see the TBN churches and they do, they shout and then they got their holy oils or their olive oil or whatever the hell they had in them bottles. But to see a pastor get up there and ask for $4 million and then say, y'all ain't got no value. Not only should I not even be here giving to you guys, nobody else should either. Because you're poor. Who says?
is that? Hmm. I'm going to say that Pastor Keon is wrong, dead wrong. He told his congregation to not give to the poor. That giving to the poor is not what God wants us to do. When it clearly says in the Bible to give to the poor. My daughter, we literally just came from McDonald's. <laughs> and uh, got these little booklets. You remember these? For those of you, a lot of you my age. Some of you my age. And they have these little coupon books. Where you can have free ice cream, free burger and all that. And you can give them out as Halloween treats. But she said, oh, we could give these just off the top of her head. I hadn't said anything about this Pastor Keon situation. But off the top of her head, she says, oh, we have to get more of those to give to the homeless. It does not hurt you to help other people. Hey, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Imani Forrester, author of the book, 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing. It's available right now on Amazon and it's free to read if you have Kindle Unlimited. We also have a Patreon now for videos and deep dives that might be a little too much for YouTube. Links are in the description. Also, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but many of you are being unsubscribed without your knowledge or consent, so please make sure to check that you're still subscribed and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. I wanted to play more reactions, but unfortunately most people were responding the same way. They tended to be religious and were finding quotes from the Bible that debunked the pastor's words. Honestly, I'm not a religious person, so unfortunately, I began to find the reactions a little triggering or redundant. Also, I didn't want to feature a bunch of videos of people just reading Bible scriptures because I'm aware that many people have left the church and other organized religions, and I don't want to trigger others who might be dealing with religious trauma. So instead, I wanted to respond to Pastor Keon Henderson's claims my own way. So here we go. Okay, so first of all, I don't believe our morals and values as individuals should be dictated by a book, no matter how old it is. We should know within our own minds and hearts that being generous whenever possible is a good and proper thing to do. If we all looked out for each other, the quality of life for everyone on the planet would improve. We would literally create heaven on earth. We don't need a so-called pastor, the Bible, or anything else to tell us when or when not to give to others who are suffering. Secondly, I've always found it very questionable and peculiar that males tend to dominate the leadership positions in religious and spiritual spaces, both in the real world and online. As in, most pastors, teachers, priests, spiritual gurus, etc. are male. Meanwhile, women make up the majority of their congregations, followers, and supporters. Yet males commit the most violent crimes, but they've appointed themselves to be the shining examples of morality, righteousness, and goodness that we should all listen to and follow in places of worship all around the world. Make it make sense. Like, what a mind trip. No wonder there's so much corruption in so many of these institutions. You'd think, if anything, that women should be heading more of the religious and spiritual spaces, and more males should be in the student position learning from us. But due to the fragile male ego and their main character syndrome that demands they always be the center of attention, many of their egos are too big for them to sit down, listen, and learn from women. It's so interesting that Pastor Keon Henderson doesn't believe there's any blessings in helping the poor, considering you shouldn't even be giving with the intent to receive anyway. The blessing should be in the act itself. Having enough to give to others is a blessing. Helping people to live easier and happier lives is a blessing. Pastor Henderson proves the research that women are actually more moral than men on average, which is more of a reason why we should be in the positions of the spiritual leaders and teachers. In a paper published in Organizational Behavior and Human Decision Processes, three studies show that women generally display more commitment to honesty and good faith actions. For example, in business, women were found to be less likely to rationalize unethical behavior like misleading others to achieve a goal. These findings are consistent with a great deal of prior research that has found that women have higher, more steadfast ethical standards and act more ethically than men in a variety of behavioral realms. For example, it's been found that when it comes to justice, women prioritize empathy, fairness, and maintaining good relationships. This is because women have a greater sense of social justice. We're more likely to challenge inequality and want fair treatment of marginalized groups. 
we place a higher value on inclusivity and addressing discrimination, and we're more likely to promote social equality, like helping the poor and making sure everyone has access to education and healthcare, which again is more of a reason why we should be teaching about morality and spirituality and religion, if anything, if anyone's to teach it. Studies have shown that males, on the other hand, are more likely to prioritize rule-based justice that focuses on principles and structure. This perspective often aligns with a preference for order and consistency. Males tend to protect, maintain, and apply existing laws even when they include societal biases that harm marginalized people. This is why crimes against women like DV and rape are taken so lightly in the justice system, for example. Many judges are male, and they tend to uphold existing rules, laws, principles, structures, and societal norms. Men are more likely to support the status quo, even when it causes inequality among races, classes, and genders. For example, studies have shown that men in judicial roles often make decisions that reflect systemic biases, such as lenient sentencing in cases involving essay violence, since they may unconsciously align with social biases about women, gender roles, and the severity of essay crimes. I think this is also why some males can hear about all the heinous crimes Diddy has been accused of, and instead of feeling empathy for his victims, they'll say, but what about Hugh Hefner? He didn't have to go to prison for his parties. For them, justice isn't about doing right by each victim and being fair and empathetic towards them. It's about treating all perpetrators of a crime the same way. So if one got away with the wrongdoings, they should all be able to. They just want to maintain the status quo. Finally, I want to circle back to the original video clip of Pastor Henderson saying that there are no blessings connected to blessing the poor other than getting back what you gave them. He's scientifically wrong, because there are literally tons of studies that detail all of the tangible benefits of giving to others. It's actually good for your health. For example, when you give to others and feel good, it's not just because you're spreading positive vibes. Your brain actually secretes feel-good chemicals like serotonin, which regulates your mood, dopamine, which gives you a sense of pleasure, and oxytocin, which creates a sense of connection with others. Psychologist Susan Albers says that when we do things for other people, it makes us feel much more engaged and joyful, which is good for our health and our happiness. The researchers at Harvard and the University of British Columbia agree with this. They said that spending money on others leads to a lasting improvement in overall happiness, according to their 2008 study. They added that this is especially true if you know that the person you're giving to really needs the help. Also, the more people give as a percentage of their household income, the more satisfaction they feel, according to a 2017 study by the Women's Philanthropy Institute. Of course, this is all within reason. It isn't the same as putting yourself in debt to be helpful to others. Anyway, the benefits extend beyond monetary giving. Acts of service, like running errands for someone, lending your time at a shelter, or even walking someone's dog, can all lower your mortality rate, according to a study by researchers at the University of Buffalo. In this study, researchers followed 846 people over five years while assessing stressful events in their lives, including illness, job loss, or the death of a family member, and also whether they provided tangible assistance to friends and family members. They found that participants who did not help others were more likely to die over the course of the study, but those who did help others were less likely to die. Quote, our conclusion is that helping others reduced mortality specifically by buffering the association between stress and mortality, explained Michael J. Poulin, lead author of the paper and associate professor of psychology at the university at Buffalo. All of these good feelings most likely occur because charitable activities trigger neural activity in areas of the brain that are linked to reward processing, the same areas that are activated by pleasures like eating and smacks, according to a 2007 study published in the journal Science. So it's clear to me that Pastor Henderson just wanted to brainwash his congregation into withholding their money from the poor so they'd give to him, the wealthy, instead. I just really hope his words fell on deaf ears. Also, I want people to know that the opposite is actually true. There are no blessings in giving to the rich. October to December is considered the giving season because charities and nonprofits notice an uptick in volunteers during this time. And I'm willing to bet it's partly because the holiday season can actually be a very lonely and depressing time of year for some people. So giving to others in need, being in their presence, sharing your time, energy, and sharing your smile with them 
can make both the receiver's and the giver's day. Based on the comments I read under that pastor's video, I'm glad that his words failed to resonate with most people, and I hope that was true for his church as well. No offense, but pastors in my experience have some of the sketchiest morals. I'll never forget being a child and being forced to go to church with my father, who also, you know, dragged along my siblings and my mom, and we were sitting down and they passed around the collections plates and everyone gave to the congregation. When the pastor saw how much everyone gave and he wasn't satisfied with it, he then had his people lock the doors and he told us, no one's leaving until I get enough money in here. And so they sent around the collections plates again until people gave enough for him to be satisfied. And only then did he let us out. And I just thought to myself in the moment as we sat there and he was telling us that no one's leaving, even as a kid, I knew that was wrong. I was just like, what is this? This is so scammy. I was like a child. And even then I was disgusted. And it's been seared into my memory of just the greed and corruption. Because I'm all about abundance. I'm all about, you know, people giving to others and receiving and making people wealthy is totally fine but not in a scummy, scammy way that a lot of different businesses, including the church, which is a business, including the way that they go about things. That's why I find pastors to be incredibly sketchy. Also, a lot of them promote cheating and they uh, encourage women to stay with cheating husbands. A whole nother conversation, but yeah, disgusting. Caring about other people and actually having the privilege of having enough to give to them actually makes the world a better place. And that's a blessing to me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.